Praise the Lord again. God bless everybody. And again, we welcome you to another edition of Warrior Talk. We pray all is well in your life. And again, if it is not, it's on its way to being well. Praise the Lord. And I believe the Lord is developing something great in you and working a great testimony in you. And again, we just pray in this moment that you be sensitive to the voice of the Lord. And again, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let's not be casual seekers concerning the things um, in which the Lord is revealing. So again, uh, as we always do, we're going to ask you again to reach out to someone, share this post with someone. Again, family, friends, enemies, in-laws, outlaws, whoever you need to reach, amen, share it with somebody, amen. So we thank God for you. Let's pray and let's journey into the word of the Lord. Father, we just thank you, eternal Lord and our God. We take this opportunity to bless your name and give thanks. First of all, we thank you for this time, this opportunity, for your grace, your mercy, your compassion, your loving kindness. Father, we just thank you for that. We thank you for the leading and guiding of the Holy Ghost that's working in us, both the willing to do of your good pleasure. And I take this opportunity to bless the people of God, the seeker and the sower. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that the words were fought on good ground and will yield the 104 harvest in their life. And you will be glorified. According to Isaiah 6, 1 and 3, you will be glorified in them, through them, with them, and for them. So we just thank you for this now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So again, we want to give you some, some tips, of course, as we've been teaching about, again, uh, spirit realm, spiritual things, the work of the Holy Spirit, because we believe that uh, strongly that this is the hour of the Holy Spirit. And we've been saying this for some time, but what I've discovered with us as people of God, uh, the ecclesia, the body of Christ, again, these things are necessary to continue to repeat because just because it's being said don't mean you have hearers and doers of the word. And again, it's good for you to hear things more than once. It's not grievous, but as the scripture say, it is safe for you to hear something again more than once because sometimes we drift off and again, as believers, again, we run towards stuff that is good, but not necessarily God. And again, that's the thing you want to do in this season. You want to allow the spirit of God to sharpen you. And these are some of the things I'm hearing in this hour and what we're in right now. And we're going to journey through a, a few things. But uh, the, one of the things the Lord uh, revealed to me by way of the Holy Spirit is that this is a season of sharpening. This is a season of preparation. And so, again, wherever you are, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, I want to give you some helpful hints and some things to do. And, again, some apostolic instructions and, again, prophetic utterance, which I think is going to be a blessing to you. And, again, uh, the strategy and the wisdom of God is so important. I want to encourage you, pray for the wisdom of God always, James 1, 5. Pray for the wisdom of God. God builds on wisdom. God develops on wisdom. And again, wisdom prepare you for what's going to manifest in your life, give you the mind to manage what's going to manifest. So again, pray for the wisdom of God. And again, listen to some of these things that we're sharing with you. But this is a season where you have to be patient. Again, many of you right now, <clears throat> you want to write that down. Be impatient. Be impatient in this season. Learning how to wait. Learning how to wait. And I'm going to tell you what to do. Again, Luke 19, 13. Learning how to occupy. And this is what I want you to do. Learn how to slow down, even in a trial, even in a test, even what you're going through. Ask yourself right now, what is it that I'm going through? And here's what the Holy Spirit, again, how he taught me and how he teaches me, is that when I'm facing anything, uh, first of all, I ask the question, Again, what season is this in my life? What is it that I'm going through? What is the purpose behind it? Again, how can God be glorified in this? See, because sometimes we want flesh to be satisfied before God is glorified. So again, that's some of the questions you want to ask yourself. Where am I? What, what is it that I'm going through? How, again, how and again, how this thing will glorify God, whatever that I'm going through. Again, so that you can start focusing on glorifying God. Watch this in every trial, every test. So again, plug this in your notes. So you learn how to strive for the mastery. You want to learn to master a thing. Please get this in, you know, learn to master a thing. Don't just rush through it. Glory to God. Master it. Master it to the point that I believe this is very significant right here. Some of the things that many of you are going through right now is keystone to your ministry. You got to get that. Glory to God. So you got to learn how to slow down and strive for the mastery. And again, understand that if I'm in training, 
And the Holy Spirit, again, which is the teacher after all, he is the teacher and something else recently we told you, he is the pace setter. He is the pace setter. Got it? He's the one that's doing the leading and the guiding. He's the one that's working in us, both the willing to do of, again, God's good pleasure, according to Philippians 2.13. So listen now. So you got to learn, as we shared with you before, learn how to submit to the supervision of the Holy Spirit. And again, we've given you some words that is so important in this season is consistency, a consistency in your obedience, again, surrendering to him. Now listen, and this is on a daily basis, and this is throughout the day. Glory to God, throughout the day. When he is not speaking, you are busy occupying his previous instruction. That's real big right there. When he is not speaking, he is simply saying, go ahead and again, master. Again, the previous instructions, the previous revelation, again, what have you already revealed to you, what have you already given to you, what is already put before you, again, before you ask, again, for something else. Have you mastered what he's already given you? Got it? And I'm telling you, many of you that have a teacher's anointing on your life, got it? If you're going to be publicly speaking, again, you're going to have a public uh, platform for preaching and teaching and so forth. See, again, a lot of things you're going through, like I said, is keystone, again, for your ministry. So, again, a lot of stuff is just, again, training. As I shared this with some ministers earlier this week, is that, see, God is simply saying, I'm not sending you back to Bible college and Bible school, but I'm going to give you some OJT. So, in other words, I'm going to release some stuff and allow some things to come in your life and come in your family, come in your finances. It seemed like all hell done, break, done broke loose in your life. But actually... It is OJT, glory to God. So again, all the anointing you have, this is what I love about believers, all the anointing you have, you get to work it, praise God. You'll never know your gift, you'll never know your strength, you'll never know, watch this, the sharpness and the sensitivity of the voice of God until you go through something. And that's why God, see, listen, real big in, in your notes, is that a lot of stuff is necessary. Glory to God. Stuff that's manifesting is necessary. Leadership, you got to hear this. A lot of things that manifest is necessary. Glory to God. And so I want you to begin to hear this. And again, real big, I hear this in my spirit. Many of you, you're in, you're in such a hurry for success. But again, you got to learn how to master your steps and allow the Lord to order your steps. And this is something he gave me earlier that, again, he's ordering your step. Of course, the scripture in Psalm teaches us that. And you request that of the Lord, order my steps in thy word. But listen to this. The Lord is ordering your steps and something else he's doing in this season is he's making sure your steps. Glory to God. He's making sure your steps. He's ordering your steps, and he's making sure your steps. So again, all of these things we want you to pay close attention to, but real big, I believe that this is a season of preparation because as, again, early on, we gave you some prophetic utterance that we believe the Lord, again, that's a great blessing. There's a lot of shifting, a lot of changing, and a, a momentum that have come to the body of Christ, and this is a season where I believe God is going to heavily favor the body of Christ, the ecclesia, but we got to keep everything in a balance, and that's why I say this is a season of training, learning how, watch this, learning how to discern distraction, learning how, again, because in time past, it's so easy for you to be distracted, so you got to go back and say, okay, Lord, perfect the things in me. That's what you want, perfect. Again, this is a season of perfection, and allow the Lord to do that, and I keep hearing this, glory to God, slow down, slow down. Only reason some of you are frustrated is you're in a hurry to get to a place you don't even know. Oh, God, you got to get that. Amen. You're in a hurry to get to somewhere you don't know and have not been revealed to you. Now, even if the Lord has revealed some things to you, again, you got to watch this require patience. Just jot down some, I mean, Psalms 27, all 14 verses there in Psalms 27 so you learn how to wait on the Lord. I have something, a revelation. Many of you probably heard me say this. Again, I know how to rest in motion. Now, that's not for everybody. Everybody is not balanced enough to be able to do that, to rest in motion. Some of you, you can't do a whole lot of things at one time. You got to learn how to master one thing before you're able to move on to something else. But real big prophetic intercessors, prophets and apostles, real big on this. You have to understand same thing with hearing. 
You can't be moving a lot. You can't have a, a lot of mental movement while hearing. You can't have a lot of mental movement while hearing. Again, we've been taught that when the mouth is open, the ears are closed. Likewise, it is in the spirit realm. So you got to learn how to slow down because Satan in this season, we told you, is a season of deception. But oftentimes, he branches off from distraction to deceive. Actually, that's oftentimes what it comes to do, to distract, to detour, and to deceive, to destroy of course, we know John 10, 10 teaches us that that's what the thief come to do. So we want to share these things with you. And again, real big in your notes, we taught you already concerning Hebrew 11, 6, where we taught you about being diligent. Got it? Same thing in Proverbs 12, 24, I believe it is. Being diligent, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule. Got it? But he that is slowful will be on the tribute. So again, diligence is very important. These words we've given you, consistency is very important. Again, momentum all of these words that we're given is very important. But now watch this. Going back, I believe the Lord wants us to learn how to be faithful over a few things. And this is one of my biggest points today is learning how to be faithful over a few things. If you can learn how to be faithful over small things, you can learn how to master big things. You got to learn with the small things. And th I believe this is the leading of the Lord. He'll always, he'll start with something small and expand you. And even in my understanding, that's one of the things I pray. I pray, Lord, expand my understanding concerning you. That's one of my prayers is for the Lord to expand my understanding. I pray the same thing for you. But at the same token, I want you to understand that Again, when the Lord is expanding your understanding, you still have to be faithful over what he's already given you. See, many believers are childish sometimes to the point they want something new. They want a new revelation. They want another gift to be working when they have not made full proof of something that he's already previously given, which means we are, we are, right, watch this, we are actually drifting into being wasteful. And God is not a wasteful God. Your father, your heavenly father is not wasteful. He is a stewardship God. You have to understand that and sometimes because of our negligence, glory to God, sometimes our current prayer is not being answered because of previous negligence. So you got to get that. Praise the Lord. I should really charge you double for that. Amen. But understand that again, sometimes that's what it is. Again, where again, the Lord says we're asking for something else and we have not really mastered. Now, you, you've, again, you've worked it, but you have not really mastered it. you got to master it till you take personal ownership of it, like Paul. If you notice something about the apostle Paul, he got to the place where he say, my gospel, glory to God, my gospel. He made it personal. In other words, I'm telling you, when Paul went out, he went out with a passion. And the Lord revealed this to me. Sometimes our preaching and our teaching is without passion because we have not made it personal. We have not taken a personal ownership of it. Got it? And again, to the point that even Paul's suffering, again, he said, in my body, I bear the marks. In other words, I suffer for this. It's mine. Glory to God. So I'm telling you, whatever you're not willing to suffer for, you won't, it won't be no passion of. And that's the thing that many believers, especially in leadership, need to get. Glory to God. You got to master something. You got to strive for the master and you got to make it personal. And I want to go further. And the Lord has been releasing a word to us recently in our congregation about going deeper. Some of you that's been tracking us online and on social media, you've heard this. And he said, go deeper. Again, Psalms 42, 7. Again, the deep calleth upon the deep. But he t I'm telling you, in this season, you need to go deeper. And if the Lord is telling us to go deeper, that's because you're not deep enough for what's coming. Not necessarily a storm. Listen, sometimes it could be a harvest coming, but you still got to be anchored. You cannot be distracted or moved even by blessings. You cannot be, but listen, you got to understand, and many believers, again, in order for you to be, again, a wise steward over blessings and things that come in your life, you need to be anchored in the things of God, that you're not even moved, that lust, amen, and greed cannot come in, even when the abundance come in your life, because you're anchored in the things of God. So again, that's what I'm telling you. 
you got to balance this thing out. See, sometimes many people preach from the standpoint of being anchored because a storm is coming. A storm is coming. That may be well true. There's some things that is coming. But watch this. Regardless of what's coming, if you're anchored, you're anchored. It doesn't matter, good or bad. Amen. Whether it's an attack. Amen. If you are anchored in the things of God, you are anchored. Nothing is going to move you. Glory to God. And you're not going to move yourself. So again, because temptation will come as well as storms, as trials will come. So you have to understand that all of that is going to come. Amen. But don't be distracted by it. And don't, watch this, don't get, again, distracted in your trials. Don't let your trial become a distraction to the point you pay more attention to what you're going through. Amen. That's what you commentate. That's what you talk about. Amen. That's what you share with other people. Glory to God. So again, you have to, as a prophetic people, as apostolic people in the earth, you have to understand that you are well ahead, again, in receiving revelation. Listen to this. And this is something that the Lord blessed me with that causes me to know how to wait for a manifestation. Because right now you're in a season of waiting for a manifestation. You prayed. You fasted, you've sown, you prophesied, you decree. So you are waiting now in a season for manifestation. So what he began to show with me or share with me is that when you have received a word, watch this, when you've received the word, you got to learn how to have confidence in the word while, watch this, in a season of waiting. You got to have a confidence in that seed. God has given you a word, but you got to have a confidence in it while waiting. And then you got to learn how to nurture it. You got to learn how to water it. You water it with prayer. You water it with declarations and decrees. So you continue to do that while waiting for the manifestation. Many of you right now, you're waiting for a manifestation, but notice some of the things you go through while waiting. Trials don't stop. Tests don't stop. Discouragement don't stop. So you got to learn how to be faithful over a few things while waiting. And then you got to learn how to guard it. You got to guard your heart. You got to guard your attitude. You got to do all these things in this season of waiting. Very important. It's just like Abraham, glory to God, when he was waiting for the move of God after he laid out a sacrifice and that seemed like that was a delay and then here come the fowls of the air, the vultures and the buzzers and everything came to try, watch this, to again to uh, devour his sacrifice, but he had to drive off again the vultures. He had to drive off the fowls of the air while waiting on God. Are you listening to me? See, again, that's what you got to do. You got to learn how to fight off the buzzards. I mean, you got to fight off the, the files of the air while waiting on the Lord. So don't get discouraged in the season of waiting. Got it? So again, watch this. Being faithful of a few things, sometimes God will give you snapshots. And this is why we talk so much about prophecy, dreams, and vision. But going back to that is that you got to learn how to be faithful of the few things. I want to give you some things that recently I went back to that the Holy Spirit gave me is that many of you that want to learn how to flow strongly in prophetic utterance and you want to flow strongly in dreams and vision and so forth, you need to learn how to be faithful over what I call spiritual nudges spiritual nudges, spiritual promptings, got it? See, again, the small things, spiritual nudgings and spiritual promptings. Sometimes the Lord would give you a flash. Sometimes he would just give you a snapshot, got it? He, he will not give you the full video of your life. He will not give you the full movie. Sometime in a dream, God will show you the trailer before he show you the movie. Glory to God of your life. See, again, but you got to watch this. The trailer get you excited. Glory to God till you want to see the rest. But the thing you got to understand in the Lord is got it. You got to learn how to be faithful over a few things. I hear that so strongly in my spirit right now about being faithful over a few things. And I believe that's what the Lord is doing in this season. Again, Matthew 25, 21 through 23 and being faithful over a few things. Let me ask you this. What has the Lord given you? What has the Lord revealed to you recently? And again, sometimes you need to slow down because some of you can get so frustrated. And this is why I sense very strong right now. You can get so spiritually frustrated that you can't even remember, remember what he said last. You are so frustrated with what is currently going on because you frustration have become a distraction. It have got you so far off course. As he gave us on last week, real big in your notes, you need to realign. You need to renew 
Renew that mind. Get back. See, if you don't have a passion, that means you're not realigned. If you don't have a stir in your spirit, you don't have a fervency of fire in your spirit, no level of excitement, glory to God, you need to realign with the Christ. You need to realign with the Holy Ghost working on the inside of you, my friend. But I'm telling you real big, you got to strive for the mastery in this season. Whatever it is you're facing, watch this. If the Lord said, I'm sharpening you in your prayer life, how sensitive uh, are you to the voice of the Spirit in this hour? See, again, you got to occupy that. Occupy till he come, Luke 19, 13. Occupy till he come. So in this season of waiting, let him sharpen you. Got it? Be, be faithful over a few things. This is what I'm telling you. Dreams, visions, glory to God. Writing them down, recording them on your smart device, whatever you need to do. And then putting, uh, watch this, nurturing them in prayer. Going back in prayer, laying it before God. Again, every dream, every vision, every thought, every prompting, every nudging, and begin to give him thanks for it. Got it? Every conviction. My Lord, I hear you. Again, learning how to give thanks for it. If the Lord move in your life, give you, watch this, give you a solution to something. Learn how to bless him and then understand this. Put that in your spiritual notes because you have to learn how to reference that again when you're going to need it again. So you have to be, again, watch this. That's all in maturity and that's all in learning how to be a good steward or a wise steward over everything. Not just money, but learning how, I believe this, if you learn how to be a good steward over revelation, you can handle money. Many of you can't handle money because you're not a good steward over revelation. So in other words, if you learn how to be accountable, watch this, in, in a lot of things, learn how to be accountable, learn how to put strong guardrails around you. See, that affects your money as well. See, many of you, you got to learn how when, when God has revealed to you just small portions of what your life is going to be in the earth, what your call is going to be, you got to learn to move in that direction. See, again, if there's an apostolic, again, pastoral call on your life, you got to come, become more of a people person because that's the way your life and your ministry is going. If you struggle with people, you're going to struggle in ministry. And that's why some of you right now, your ministry is delayed, but you don't understand. God say, you have revelation, that's not a problem. You have dreams, not a problem. You can pray, that's not a problem. Glory to God. You pray in the spirit, that's not a problem. But when it comes to people, glory to God. And this may be this season. I don't know why it seems like I'm hitting somebody square in the face right now. When it comes to people, and this may be a season where the Lord said, listen, this is what I want to work with you on, your tolerance, your patience with people, working with others, being a team player, learning how to share, learning that you are not, again, all that that you think you are. Praise God. In other words, whatever you are, whatever anointing, whatever grace that's on your life, again, it only came because God gave it to you. And I had to understand that. No matter what God revealed to me, I boast in the Lord all day long because I understand I am what I am by his grace. Glory to God. Amen. I am what I am by his grace. No matter what I can recall, no matter what I can quote, no matter I lay hands on the sick, I am what I am by the grace of God. And again, my, uh, the purpose of God in my life in the earth realm, what I'm designed to do, what I'm called to do. And once you understand that, you get very comfortable in that. Listen now, not that you take it for granted, but you get very comfortable in the fact that, okay, I know what I'm called to do. I'm good with that. See, again, it's going to be hard for the enemy to move you, but see, some of you are tossed here and there because you have not locked in on what he have called you to do, so you're still bouncing around all over the place, glory to God, misuse of time, misuse of resources, and that's what will happen when you're bouncing around and all over the place. So I pray that I pray that I'm helping you right now because I sense very strongly the Lord is simply saying, real big patience, slow down, strive for the mastery right where you are right now. Glory to God. Sometimes he's chasing us. He's chasing. What I mean by chasing, he's not chasing running behind you. He is disciplining Got it? That's the chasing, and that's what he would do with sons and daughters. He would chasten them that he loved. So again, that's maybe a season of what he's doing right now. Like I said, he will give you a snapshot. He won't give you the full movie, but you got to be faithful over the snapshot. Glory to God. Amen. If he just gave you one picture of yourself or one picture of you and someone else, again, pray over that. Amen. Just like you do a picture, put it in a frame, whatever you need to do. Now, 
Now, if you haven't been faithful over that, why would you expect? If you wasn't faithful over the 5 by 7 snapshot, how do you think you're going to give you a 16 by 30? That's the family size portrait, my friend. But you got to learn how to be faithful over a few things. And I'm telling you one rebuke that God has given to his people in this, in this season. Again, you got to be a wise steward. Again, stop, again, being so much moved by impulses of the emotions and of the flesh, spending money impulsively, being led by an impulsive spirit and not the Holy Spirit, even in our investings. Glory to God, don't just chase after cryptocurrency and all of this and you're being distracted because that spirit of greed is operating, that spirit of lust is operating, but you don't know it. When God is simply saying, slow down so that you can hear me in this season. I'm telling you what I hear. He is saying, and slow down, glory to God, so again, that I can perfect the things that concerning you. That's what he want to do. God will perfect that. That's what he's working right now. Psalms 138 and 8, Philippians 1 and 6, glory to God. He is perfecting that right now, what's concerning you. But you got to submit to his leading and submit to his guiding, glory to God. Let me give you this before I get out of here, is that what did you do in your last trial? How did you respond to your last test? How did you respond to to your last temptation did you how again what was your response watch this what gift was manifested in your last trial in your last test glory to god what fruit of the spirit was produced and manifest in your last test your last trial your last confrontation that's how, that's how you mark again your growth and what are you perfecting got it very important right there i believe this is a season a master. And again, God wants you to master something. He wants you to watch this. He wants you to maximize. We've been teaching that word for a, a long time. He wants you to make full proof of. God, he wants you to occupy. All of this, we want you again to get in your spirit. Again, I believe this strongly for many of you prophets out there, many of you prophetic and apostolic people. This is a season where God is sharpening you and this is what he's delivering you from. Dullness of hearing. Dullness of hearing. Dullness of hearing. Got it? Well, some of you, you're not hearing at all. Secondly, there's some of you that he got to say it over and over and over. That's the way it is when you're dull of hearing. Again, jot that in your strip, in your notes there, Matthew 13, 11 through 15, dullness of hearing. And I believe that's what the Lord is saying to the ecclesia. Not that he's not going to uh, bless, but he is going to bless. But this is a season of sharpening. Again, but also there's levels of deliverance that is taking place. And I shared this before. I believe all of this sharpening and deliverance is taking place because of what he's going to do. Got it? But not only that, there's a season right now of, of where he's delivering it again the ecclesia from skepticism and superstition we gave that to you because it's too close to witchcraft god if you're going to flow prophetically that's why watch this real big we've been talking this for some time is that you have to learn how to differentiate between soul and spirit we've shared that so much but i'm not going to stop saying it because i've learned and i'm not calling you slow but again you're slow to catch the full revelation of a thing got it because a revelation can come and i've discovered something it can tickle your ears to some degree and not reside in your heart. Glory to God. And it just tickles your ears on Sunday. It tickles your ears on Wednesday. Again, and your spirit is just leaping. Glory to God. But it's not resident. Glory to God. See, watch this. Again, you can entertain something versus being intimate with it. See, when you're intimate with it, you know it. Got it? And I, I used the illustration, again, how we can entertain God, again, versus uh, being intimate with the Father. See, again, if I come to live with you, great illustration, again, you entertain me for an hour, hour and a half, because, again, I'm not dwelling in your house. I'm not living with you and your family, but I'm just visiting. So you entertain me, and you play the host, Glory to God, and you be very good at it because you only, watch this, you only doing it during the endurance of the time that I'm there. But when I come to live with you, it's totally different now. You have to change your life. Listen to this real big, and I got to go. You have to change your life to accommodate my dwelling. 
Glory to God, you got to get that. You have to change your life as a believer to accommodate the dwelling of the Holy Ghost. You have to change your life of the believer to accommodate. Glory to God. You got. If I come to live with you, you're going to give me a room, and you're going to say, again, this is your room, and you're going to say, we got this in the house, we got that in the house, here's the kitchen. Glory to God. You got to show me the kitchen. Glory to God. You're going to show me the refrigerator. You're going to show me all these things. And then this is what you're going to make the mistake of saying. Make yourself at home. Don't tell me that. Glory to God. Don't tell me to make myself at home. And then all of a sudden when I get started, you telling me, wait a minute, you can't touch this. You can't go over here. You can't. No. You have to watch this. Adjust your life to accommodate my dwelling. Folks, I'm telling you nothing more than John chapter 15, 1 through, again, 7. Normally we tell you, but again, 1 through 15 in John chapter 15, the abiding. That's what we're telling you right there. Listen, again, I pray that you, again, have received what I'm telling you. This is a season where the Lord is raising you up. Listen, many of you right now that's been at home for a season, I believe God is using that time. Glory to God. So don't feel uh, uh, full of guilt or condemnation. I believe all of that is going to work together for your good. But listen to me. You got to track this word, what I'm telling you right now. If I tell you God is raising up prophetic sentinels. Got it? You want to write it down. Prophetic sirens prophetic alarm clocks. I'm closing with this because this is going to bless you. Amen. Prophetic alarm clocks. And I believe that's some of you right now. The Lord is making you. But here's the thing about becoming a prophetic alarm clock. Again, one thing about an alarm clock, it can be annoying. Glory to God. And that's what some of you can't stand. You want everybody to like you. But God is simply saying, I want to raise you up as a prophetic alarm clock. And again, just like me, again, uh, uh, I don't hate my alarm clock, but I don't get up saying to my alarm clock, you know what, old alarm clock? I love you. I love you so much. No, it's annoying. But watch this. Annoying but necessary. In this hour, my friend, many of you, you're going to be prophetic alarm clocks. There's people going to have to tolerate you because you are annoying but necessary. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody ain't going to want to hear you, just like an alarm clock. Everybody don't want to hear the alarm clock, but they know the alarm clock is necessary, especially for many of you that got to get up and go to a job or whatever the case may be. You got to go to an appointment. You have alarm clocks. Got it? You may slap it or whatever. Glory God. Now, praise God. Don't take that literally, but praise God. You saying it is necessary. God is going to raise some people up that are going to be prophetic alarm clocks. Annoying, but necessary. I pray you receive the word of the Lord today. I did. I've been blessed by it. I've been encouraged by it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I pray you've been stirred. Amen. But listen now. Go back over it. Master it. Amen. Some of you, you, you sort of grab spiritual things the way you eat naturally. You need to slow down. Chew your food. Slow down. Praise God. The food ain't going nowhere. Slow down. Glory to God. We appreciate you. Love you in the Lord. Glory to God. And we bid you shalom.